I'm Susan Budge. We're in Heidi Bond Fine Art with my exhibition Ecstasy Over Agony, which is a compilation of work that addresses my emotional reaction to the pandemic and all the events that have happened since it started. The, um, on the title wall is Ecstasy, which is celebrating part of the positive aspect of the pandemic, which is spending time with with people that we love and making connections. There are more pieces in the show that deal with, with the agony of the pandemic, and a lot of us have had more than our fair share of the agony. Um, it would take pages to document all the changes and tragedies that have happened since this pandemic started. The, the Scream is an older piece in the show. It's actually from 2009, but I felt it was so appropriate for this show, and I reworked it with the surface. Then another piece that relates to the Scream, which the content is self-evident, is Whisper, which I think is a more sensual piece. And then a more celebratory piece is the Gold Star, which incorporates not only stoneware glaze, but also a gold luster, which requires a third firing. And I think the gold star is really more of a celebratory piece. So even though we've had a lot of tragedies and sadness during the pandemic, there have been really beautiful moments in the pandemic also. While I was at my studio right now, out at the ranch is outside on a deck, and I was outside working when the thunderstorm came, and Rick was mowing in the thunderstorm, and I asked him to stop, and and he um, reluctantly agreed to, and moments later, a lightning bolt hit the palm tree by the pool and burst into flames. So this is representing the palm tree going up like a torch. And I actually used um, the burnt palm fronds after we put the fire out, and a couple days later when we were calmer, this is when I started this piece, but I used the palm fronds and made molds of them for these extension pieces, and then I incorporated the cutting that I use on so many of my other pieces. This piece is Animus, which addresses the feminine side of the male psyche, or vice versa, I'm not sure, or the male side of the female psyche, one or the other. Anyway, it's about the combination of male and female. Love Light, it has to do with uh, uh, a daily meditation. So the word on it, the wording on it is love, light, and abundance, repeated. And this piece is referencing a microphone. I'm living with a musician, so a microphone is an important part of our lives now, too. This is the Blue Shaman, which addresses my need to work on a large scale. It also references uh, early influence on my work, which was the Native American aesthetic that influenced me when I was growing up in New Mexico, in Albuquerque. Um, early in my career, as an undergraduate student, I had the good fortune to work with Peter Volkes, and he encouraged me to work on a large scale, which requires some extra things, like you have to have enough time to work on a large scale, you have to have enough clay, you have to have a big enough kiln, and uh, typically a piece of this size takes me between four and six weeks to construct. This piece actually took me longer than that because of the shutdown due to the pandemic. And then in the kiln, you have to have a big enough kiln and enough gas to fire it over the course of several days. This is Gold Bird, which is actually a ceramic with a gold glaze, but takes on a bronze patina. This is showing my influence from Brancusi. However, one of the guests at the show said that it looked like it was a combination of influence of Henry Moore and Brancusi, which I love both of those artists, so I think that's very fitting. Gold Sentinel incorporates a cutting technique that I developed in the late 80s, I think around uh, 1986 or 87. So the cutting references a spine, and the way I 
achieve it is making the solid form first. Actually, it's a hollow form, but the surface is all closed. And then I take the knife and literally cut each of these fingers or ribs that goes in. And then sometimes the cutting process will make the clay start to move in on its own. Sometimes I have to help it by pushing on it a little bit. So if you get close, you can see that the edges are still green, which makes a, a nice um, uh, accent on the edges of the piece. This piece is called Aphrodite, and this piece has gone through several transitions. I've uh, Sometimes if I have my work for a long time, I'll make changes in them over the years. This piece started out uh, being, with the surface being covered with oil paint and it was actually pink but after some time I decided I didn't want it pink anymore so I glazed it this dark blue and then put a uh, silver luster like the gold star has a gold luster on it this one has a silver luster on it these two pieces white horns and blue bull uh, directly address the wildlife at the ranch and they incorporate the realistic eye which I started making after the birth of my son I had my son when I was in my 40s, quite an unexpected surprise. So I had to take my baby to the studio with me to work and I put him in his baby holder on a work table and every time I looked at him, he was watching everything I do, which made me painfully aware of my uh, parental responsibility and that I needed to mind my behavior to set a good example for my son. After seeing the uh, African collection at the Manil Museum. They, uh, in that collection, they have pieces impaled with metal and nails that are called power figures. So this is a, a, an attempt to uh, conquer the pain. This one says, why cry? This one says, reflect on the state of your heart. This one says, only with the heart can one see rightly. Um, this one is actually the piece that is titled Agony, and the text on it says, Loss, Grief, the price we pay for the glory of love. This is Oracle. An Oracle is like a messenger. I work spontaneously in the studio, so I don't always know what my work is about, but I knew that this referenced an owl. We have big owls out at the ranch. Then as the form evolved, I had to figure out what the meaning was.